So the third example we're gonna talk about using exponential functions is compound interest. A lot of you have seen uh, similar, or seen this kind of thing before. It's a very, very common application. Um, compound interest. So I wanted to talk a little bit about where the formula for compound interest comes from and understanding it and how to remember it. There's two different formulas. Uh, and this, this example is just called compound interest, and then the final example of this uh, section will be um, continuously compounded interest, which is a different formula. It's a simpler formula. So P, capital P is used, this is in finance, right? It's used for the principal. That's the pull with the P-A-L. Principal value. It's also, well, it's called the principal. It's also called the present value. Economists tend to call it present value, whereas people in banking and regular Joe on the street, if, if they know anything about this, <laughs> call it the principal. Fortunately, both start with a P, so not too hard to remember. And what is the principal? It's the investment amount or loan amount. So the initial loan amount or the initial uh, investment amount. It takes the place of the p naught in the population equations that we just did. They just don't put a naught on it. <laughs> so the p here is the initial amount, initial amount loaned or initial amount borrowed. Okay. Initial amount of money. R is the rate of interest. And this is usually an annual rate. A bank will always say, if you read the fine print, it'll say, and it'll almost always say annual. Banks will always say annual. So such and such a rate compounded annually. And I'll show you what it means by compounded. Um, there are some credit unions that will write, give you a rate compounded monthly, but that's mostly f fall into the wayside. People find it confusing and deceptive, and so they've pretty much all gone to annual. But if you do a like a payday loan, they give you rates that are not annual rates. They'll give you like 180% per uh, compounded weekly or compounded daily, some loan shark amount of money. Um, so if you have to pay attention to how much interest, uh, what the, the uh, whether it's annual or monthly or biweekly or whatever. Um, in this course, usually if it doesn't say that it's per year, which is annual, then they mean per year and they just left it off or I left it off. So that's kind of the default. If it doesn't say... Now, if you're dealing with your own money, real money, don't just assume anything. Find out. <laughs> Get it in writing. <laughs> but um, in math classes, yeah, assume it's annual unless they say otherwise. So that's the rate of interest, R. Not the amount of interest, the rate of interest. N is going to be the number of times per unit time. Uh, if it's annual, the unit time is years. Uh, so it's usually the number of times per year that interest is added to the principal. Number of times interest is compounded. So compounding means you take, you earn some interest and then they put it in with the initial amount of money. And then you earn more interest and they then they include that. And so you end up earning interest on your interest. That's con called compounding. The other thing that could happen is like what happens with... Um, uh, savings bonds usually. Uh, say you buy a certain amount, say a thousand dollars in savings bond. At the end, when it matures, whenever that is, they just give you the interest. Actually, they usually give you all of it back. But they might ask you, you know, do you want to? Well, if you don't give them, if you don't sell the bond, you still have the bond. So they'll just send you whatever interest you earned. So it's not being compounded. It's not being reinvested, right? 
into your initial, so you're not buying more bonds with the interest. You're just getting it as a cash. You might want to do that like if you're, if you're living off of the uh, interest, you're earning off of the bonds. Say you're retired, you know, so you, you'll always get the same amount every month. It's not the smartest way to do it, but because you'll die with the same amount of money in the bank or in the bonds. Okay, well, anyway, so N is number of times per unit time. So we'll just stick with years for now, right? So number of times per year. So say you compounded your interest. So they're going to compute your interest and add it in to the principal, right? Every, say, 12 times a year. So that would be every month, right? 12 times a year. Then N would be 12. If it was every week that they count the interest and put it in, to your account every once a week, then N would be um, 52. If it's every day, it'll be 365, probably 0.24 or something. Uh, in this class, we just use 365. Um, okay, so that's what N is, number of times it's compounded per unit time or per year usually, okay? Um, my credit union, I have two credit unions. One compounds interest once a week and one compounds interest once a month. So it's totally not unrealistic. Um, my bank compounds interest once every second. The reason that those, are, those differ is because the larger the amount of money that the institution is dealing with, the more frequently they have to compound it to get the amount of interest that they're stating that they're giving. So for example, um, with small amounts of money, the, the difference between compounding once a week and compounding once a second might be less than a penny. So it doesn't matter at all. So there's no point in a small uh, institution like a credit union, you know, where your, your deposits are fairly small relative. It's not like millions or billions of dollars usually. Um, there's no point in them using the computing power to compound your interest every second because that means every second it has to compute for everybody's account a percentage and add that amount in, which is, you know, to several decimal places, right? Um, if it doesn't make any difference over a period of a year, say, uh, how much money you get, whether they do it monthly or whether they do it uh, by the second, then it's much cheaper to do it monthly. But banks deal with very large amounts of money, very large amounts of money. So that's why they do it more frequently, okay? Okay, that's a lot of talking about it, but I think it's important to understand this stuff because everybody should know this stuff. So T is going to be time in the units given in the statement of the interest. You always look at the interest, how the interest rate is given to find what the units of the time is. And it's usually years, unless you're doing a payday loan, which you shouldn't, uh, in which case uh, it could be much shorter. Or if you're doing savings bonds, it might they might mature in three years, so it would be per three years, you know. Or they might give you an annual rate as well. Actually, they usually do give you an annual rate for those, for like certificates, savings certificates. And A is the future value. It it should be F, but A actually stands for amount, but that's kind of stupid, because there's a loan amount the investment amount, right, which is the principal, and then there's the amount you end up after end of time. So it's it's a confusing word to use, but that's what A stands for. So I would just think of A as meaning future value. That's very clear what that means, right? And that's the professionals, the economists. <laughs> well, actually, bankers are the professionals. The economists are the theorists. <laughs> But uh, that's what they use, and I, I prefer future value. Um, it's just 
because I'm a mathematician, I want to be clear. Okay, and then your formula is going to be this. Wow, and yet, do I have to memorize that? Yes, you do. Okay, so I'm going to explain on the next video how to comprehend, maybe two next two videos, how to comprehend this. And if you comprehend what's going on, it's easy to remember. If you don't, it's you're going to, like if you waited a few years, you would definitely not remember that formula, right?